What's up lifelong learners? It's your boy Mr. Hang and we're back with another tutorial. So this is what we're learning today. What are we learning? Did, that was the wrong slide. Oops. <laughs> this is what we're learning today. <laughs> what are we learning? How to use paintbrush, clone, eraser, and gradient tool on photop.com. Why are we learning it? To be able to paint colors, clone parts of an image, erase, and dump gradient slash color onto a layer. How do we know we learned it? When students are able to clone a part of an image, make a duplicate, basically, I took this part, I cloned it, I made a duplicate, paint a small part of the duplicated differently. So here's my duplicate, and I painted this dude right here. All right, and then uh, dump a gradient color as a new background layer. So you can dump a gradient or a color, not gradient color, just full color, or gradient color and erase the parts you don't want the viewers to see so I basically erase everything else around this area and I wanted you to just see this guy sitting over here and it's basically like a red shadow of him or a red silhouette okay so this is going to show me you've learned every single tool that I'm about to go through today so the first thing you're going to do here is you're going to create a blank canvas so we're going to go photo p file new Make sure you name this clone paint brush and eraser tool. You're going to go to screen, click on full HD, and then the full HD will give you these presets and make sure the background is transparent and then click create. Okay. So that is the first thing that we're doing is creating that. And then you're going to download this practice picture. So you're going to click on this, click on that. Okay, you click the link and then it'll open up this and then you'll be able to download this. I shot this photo when I went to go adopt my daughter. This was like me hanging out with my wife at a park before we picked her up. But yeah, I just saw this guy and I just wanted to take a picture, you know what I mean? <laughs> but anyways, download it. Click on download. It'll download and then it'll go to your download folder. The name of this file is Taiwan Practice Image. So you download it, it'll go to your download folder and you'll see Taiwan Practice Image right here. Okay, and then you will go to photop.com and you're going to open that image. You can open place, but I want to do this instead because I want you to practice the move tool. You're going to go to open, you're going to go to download, you're going to go to Taiwan practice image, and then you're going to open this. And you'll be able to use this image to follow along with me. Okay, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a move tool. And I'm going to click, hold, drag, and then I'm going to place it here where I can see the pigeon on the left and these uh, I can see this pigeon on the left right here and I can see this uh, yellow leaf right here chilling you can see these pigeons on top here we're gonna mess around with this image okay so the next thing here is we are going to talk about the quick review of the previous lesson and I want to talk about these two tools right here real quick uh, I'm gonna close this all right so I'm gonna talk about this tool right here, which is the spot healing. So if I zoom in by using command plus or go to view zoom in on top right here okay, view zoom in, I'll be able to use this tool called the spot healing brush tool. I'll be able to click and move around this leaf. It will heal this area and at the same time blend it with whatever is near there. Okay. So this is a review of the previous lesson. So I'm not going to Go through that in detail and then there's the next one i'm going to do command z here because i want to undo that and then here's another one the healing brush tool this one's a little different this one's going to be related to the tool we're about to talk about which is the clone tool so i'm going to click i mean i'm going to hold down the alt or option key and i'm going to get that crosshair that x i'm going to select this area right here by clicking and then i'm going to bring it over here and i'm going to paint over this area and it is going to clone and at the same time blend in that leaf as best as it can as best as it can with whatever you just copied right here okay so that's a quick review of those two tools now i want to relate this tool to the clone stamp tool or the clones tool which is right here this is the clone tool when you click on the clone tool watch what happens if i click this area right here, like the, the, see this leaf right here? Okay, I'll click and hold. I'll, I'm sorry, 
I'll hold down Alt or Option, and I'm going to click here on this leaf, and I'm going to bring this leaf over here, and I'm going to paint. Notice that it straight up replaced it, and you can tell there was an editing there. Like it didn't even try to blend. Let me just make this. Uh, oh, Command Shift Z. Let me just hold down the space key right here and drag it over. Basically, I use space key as the hand key right here. Now let me just show you this more apparently. All right, now let me go back. I'll show you the spot healing where I choose this pigeon. I'll hold Option. I'll click on the feet. And I'm going to bring it over here. And I'm going to paint a pigeon right here. All right, I'm cloning a pigeon right there. I'm just going to go super fast here because I'm going to save you guys time. All right, I'm cloning that area and watch what happens. This will try, this tool will try to blend that pigeon in with the area that's here. See, the, the, it tried, all right? It tried. Now, <laughs> the this stamp tool or this clone tool, you hold down option and you pick the feet area and I'll bring it over here. Let's say the pigeon standing over here on this rocky area. All right, so I'm, I'm painting this pigeon here into this area of the rock. And then look, I let go and look what happened. I cloned it, but this clone tool don't even want to blend the area around it in to make the pigeon look like it seamlessly was there. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's not... It's a useful tool in its, in its own case, but I just want to show you the difference between the two, okay? And I can paint another pigeon right here. Let's say I want to paint a pigeon right here, okay? And I can keep doing this, all right? Now look what happens when I just click, click, click around. Click, click, click. See, I just, I'm just making all these different feet of the pigeon or cloning the pigeon feet. Unless I click and then move around, then I'll get that whole pigeon, all right? Just play around with that, uh, you know, pause this video and play around with that for five minutes before moving on to the next part. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to the. Um, again, I just I'm just reminding you, similar to heel brush tool, but does not blend with surrounding. The paint brush and the pencil tool, they they pretty much do the same thing to me. All right, so let's say I have the paint brush right here. I click on the paint brush, and then I can choose my color. I'll take red because <laughs> my favorite color is red, and then I will paint on this background layer red oh I painted white oops all right so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to choose this color red and I'm gonna click OK and I am going to oh I, I, okay never mind <laughs> that's why okay I need to click on the paint I need to click on this I need to choose red okay cool and then my uh, blend mode I'll bring that to normal okay so if I put normal, see, I can paint the pigeon red, all right? And if I paint on the background layer, I see nothing. But there is red there. If I hide this, I see red, okay? So make sure you know exactly which, which layer you're painting. Now, if I change the blend mode, and I can change the size of the, um, the, size of the brush here, or use the left bracket and right bracket, I have the Command Z here. I'll do left bracket, it'll get smaller, right bracket, it'll get bigger. Those are shortcuts, okay? And then uh, if I change the blend mode to, let's say, overlay or something like that, it's going to be a little different. It's going to look a little different. So you just mess around with these settings up here. So basically, that's what it does. It, it paints, and then if you choose a different blend mode, it gives it a different look. I'm not going to explain every single one of these. Just mess around, explore, and then maybe I'll explain this in the future future. But even I don't understand all of these because I don't want to know all of them. I just experiment and then see what I like and I use it. Okay. And then uh, you can change the opacity, which means it's like lightening the red. All right. Let's say if I go to uh, normal, I'm going to paint light red. If I go 100% opacity, I will go full red. There is no transparency. And if I do flow, that means just to do a little bit of it, a little bit of it, not too much. And then when I click again over it, oh, I'm doing more. So it's basically like a diluted brush. That's what a flow is, okay? If I wanted like the full effect of it, then I'd use 100 flow, bam, okay? So think of flow, 
as that girl who sells insurance. <laughs> Did I really just say that? No, not that flow. The flow of the 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 dilution of the the like watercolor. With more paint, you get super red. With less paint and diluted, you get less red and more opaque. Okay. All right. So that is flow, and then smoothness, and all this other stuff. Just just mess around. All right, mess around. And then um, I am going to go to the pencil tool. So I'm going to click and hold. I'll get the pencil tool. This pencil tool, I'll blow it up to make it bigger. And then uh, again, the, the blend mode is normal. It just looks a little different. It's not like painty looking. It's like more pixelated. See how the, the edges are different from the paint. So that's basically it. They're pretty much the same. And you can mess around with opacity, smooth, and all that stuff. Okay, so I just want to see what smooth would do. 100% smooth. Ooh, it doesn't look so smooth because look at this. It's like lagging. <laughs> but anyways, it's not so smooth in terms of my internet speed and uh, the computer processing and all that stuff. Just mess around with these things, but that is what your paint and your pencil tool will do. All right, pause. Play around with this for five minutes before moving on to the next part. Okay. All right, so the next part is to learn the eraser tool. Okay, so I'm clueless about the background eraser tool and how it works. So if you know, leave it in the comments down below because I tried to learn it and I just don't understand it. It like erased certain parts of the image and I don't know why it's erasing that part and why it's leaving certain parts. Like, I don't get it. I assumed it just erased the background, but it didn't. Okay, so. What I'm going to do here is I am going to go to the eraser tool, which is here. Click and hold. You have the background eraser tool. Like I said, I'm clueless on what that does, but I do know what the eraser tool does. When you click on the eraser tool, it does this. Okay. Let's say on my background, I'm going to dump, and you'll see this, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. I'm going to dump red. Okay. Red is my background. It was transparent. Now it's red, and I'm red too. Look at that. Oh, I'm imagining the background color. Mm, okay. Never mind. All right, so what happens here is when I erase this pigeon, okay, I'm gonna, I erase the wrong pigeon area. I need to click on this layer. Let's just name this one picture, okay? And the background will be a real background. I will name, I will paint this picture, and then I will cut a hole through to see what the bottom layer is, okay? So think of it this way. I have a red piece of paper on top of a magazine cutout of this pigeon, right? And I put the magazine cutout on top of that red layer. What are you going to see in the pigeon area? Red. Basically, that's what's happening. You're cutting a hole on paper, or in this case, it's a digital hole. Think of it that way. All right, now, um, I can also erase the background layer. Let's say I want to click on the background layer, and I'll make my paintbrush smaller. I can actually paint brush this red area out and then I see through and what I've got to see through, this is just transparent, okay? In our world, like if I put it up against like my computer screen, I would see through and I would see whatever is on the computer screen. Like let's say I have my magazine cut out, I have my layer that was cut, right? That red layer that was cut, that red piece of paper that was cut or the construction paper, right? And then I see through that to the screen. but. In digital world, you see through and you see through to basically transparency. That's what you see. So that is what's happening. I basically cut a hole on this red layer. And when I put this on top, you see the magazine on top, and then you see the red construction paper, and then you see through the red construction paper. So that is what the uh, eraser tool does. It's, it's like, think of it as using scissors to cut this part out. Okay? All right. So again, if you know what the background eraser does, holla at your boy in the comments because I don't know. I'm ignorant like that. Okay? All right. So you kind of saw the next tool already. Again, take five minutes, mess around with the uh, eraser tool, and then move on. Okay. So the next thing here is the paint bucket. I'm going to do Command Z here. All right. The paint bucket does this. When you click and hold, you, you, you actually have the gradient tool first. All right? And then there's the paint bucket. The paint bucket allows you to do this. So I'm going to hide this layer right here. All right. And I'm going to dump a different color on here. 
Let's say I want to dump mm, light blue or turquoise color right here. I'll click OK. And then I will click on this layer and I will change that color completely to this light bluish aqua, whatever color. I have no idea. Leave it in the comments if you know what this color is, because I don't. Okay? So basically, that's what you do. And if you want to change this color again, you're going to go over here, click on that, and then you're going to go to like, let's say purple. All right? I want purple. Gerald Undone, if you ever watch this. <laughs> I got you, purple boy. Let's go. <laughs> Anyways, let's go to the next thing, which is the gradient tool. And the gradient tool does this, okay? It is going to go, if you click and hold from left to right, it is going to go purple to that bluish color on the bottom. See? Oh, wait, take that back. I have this over here. So I go to the original. It will go, if I click and hold, and then drag from left to right, I will go gradient from this purple color to this greenish blue color. And then what's in the middle is kind of a blend between the two. So you're doing a gradient, you're transitioning. If I hold from the top down, and I go to the diagonal downward, and you'll see the purple to light green-ish blue thing the jiggy here, it's like blending it like if i do a sharp one like this like a really short line you see it's more this is radial let me do linear you see this is this is a sharp 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 line all right if the shorter this is the sharper the line the longer this is the longer the transition okay so it goes from this color to that color and you can swap colors by clicking that so i swap back again if i click from left to right to left look I started here with purple, I end over here with green. So if I start from the top right to the bottom left, I'll start with purple here and go screen there. So the direction matters. When you click and drag to whichever direction, it does matter because it, this start with this color and you end with that color. So let's say um, I want to make this like radial. Radial just means circular. Look at that, circular. All right, angle, look at this. Bam, look at this mesh, weird mesh right here and it's a straight line, then there's like a stark difference between the two. And then there's like a blending over here. So angular, just mess around with that. And then reflection, this is what I like. I like, I like this one, okay? So the longer you hold this, the more it's gonna reflect, see? Like that, like bluish purple. And then uh, you just mess around with those things. And then the blend mode, you can do different things with the blend mode. Um, opacity, again, change the opaqueness, like, like that, okay? So I'll pick that back to 100. You can reverse it, you can dither. You can mess around with those things uh, because I'm trying to keep this tutorial short, but you get the, the big idea and you can go mess around and create art that way. Because sometimes it's just a matter of like stumbling on something random and then you make art that you like and then other people like it. <laughs> and it was a mistake. <laughs> All right, uh, so the next thing here is I wanna talk about, um, I think that's it. I think that's it. We did the gradient tool, the bucket tool, We've done color. Now just go and create this. Okay? Just make this. Now once you make this, I'm gonna walk you through it one more time. When students are able to clone part of an image to make a duplicate, so I make a duplicate, I cloned from the right to the left, okay? And I paint a small portion of the duplicate differently, so I painted the guy red, okay? So that what makes it looks different. And then I'm going to dump a gradient or a solid color as the new background. So that's my new background on my background layer right here, right? Okay. And then I am going to uh, erase the part that you're going to erase the part that you don't want to see, me to see and show me the background, show me a duplicate, show me a painting of this. And then this demonstrates that you've learned to use all these tools in its most basic and a little bit advanced form. All right? So you're going to work on this image and save it as a PSD. You're going to name it Clone Paint Brush and Eraser Tool. So once you're done, you're going to click on File, Export, JPEG. I'm not going to save this. All right, I've already done it. So once you click on File, Export, JPEG, it will be saved as Clone Paint Brush and Eraser Tool. You're going to go take that from your download folder right here and you're going to drop it into your digital photography you're making go into your unit 2 folder and then you go into your thumbnail project folder 
and you're going to drag and drop what you downloaded, drop it in here onto the browser, and then you're going to wait for it to upload. You're going to right click, get share link. All right, and then you're going to copy that link. Make sure anyone with link can see. Make sure it's viewer, all right, not editor. And then click done. Take it to Canvas. Go to your class. Go to your module. Go all the way down to the bottom, and you will see clone, paintbrush, and eraser tool. Click that. Submit the link. And your boy, Mr. Hang, can grade it on Sunday on my free time. Did you hear that? My free time. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So please submit these. And um, if you are wondering what kind of equipment that I use to make these productions, links are in the description below. Anything that you buy through those links will support my classroom because things break. And uh, sometimes we need like SD cards and stuff like that, like on the fly. And sometimes we don't have time to like, you know, fill out club forms and all that stuff. It's like, and that's why I have this separate fund where it's like emergency fund where I go buy stuff for, this, for the class when I need it instead of using my own money because I used to do that too much and I'm like, mm, not anymore. Okay? That's why you bought Mr. Hang, make money on the side so you can help support his student. Feel me? So support me. Next thing is don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because Mr. Hang wants to leverage big companies. <laughs> Maybe one day, you know, I'll, I'll like get free equipment and stuff for the classroom. I'm talking about like, you know, like the Ursa 12K, stuff like that for the classroom. Maybe. I don't know. You know, you can dream big. One day I'll make it happen. Well, I'll, I won't make it happen. We, because I need you to help me to make it happen. All right. So if you're new to the channel, get your hand ready. And if you are a returning person, you know how we do. Rock, paper, peace. Let's hang out again in the next video.